Hello everybody and welcome all thanks to LD Mobile. This is NBL Overtime. We are into the last regular season weekend of NBL 20. We know the Kings and the Wildcats and the Taipans are going to be playing in the finals, but we have no idea what else is going to happen. Hashtag C incredible. The perfect hashtag for what has been so far a perfectly drama-filled season. I'm Cam Luke, joined by a man who's well, he's fired up. He's already dropped a little Insta story. He says he's been quiet, which is not exactly true, but he's going to bring the noise. Hello to you. Just tell me when it's time to go. OK, hold on for a second. Studs and Duds is out. NBL.com.au. Liam Santa Maria. Hello. Hello. Have you been to Flight Centre yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I spent most of the afternoon at Flight Centre, <laughs> calling TV, T-shirt companies, just getting my nah, stuff sorted. Don't worry about the T-shirt companies. Matty Walsh has to supply the T-shirt. Oh, does he? Oh, well, I assume so. If he says you have to wear it, he has to supply it. But either way, we'll get to all that and plenty more. But we'll start with what is obviously the main topic of conversation. We've got one spot and three teams who right now have a chance to take it. New Zealand sit fourth, Brisbane, and then Melbourne United as we look towards the race for fourth place. And his whole weekend gets set up beautifully Thursday night to kickstart the round when the Cairns Taipans are in town to take on United. So we'll have maybe a clearer picture once that's done. I'm going to let you go first, Liam, just quickly, because I feel our man is about to unleash. Fascinating finish. We get this year after year in the Hungry Jacks NBL. It is just so tight if you want to be involved in the finals. You tip your hat to Sydney, Perth and Cairns because they have worked their way out of this dogfight. And these three teams are in amongst it. And the Bullets, wow, they really shot themselves in the foot with that loss to the Breakers. So I think they're the third most likely to the bullets are pretty much done. Two of those teams play South East Melbourne Phoenix this weekend. New Zealand on Friday night and then United on Sunday to end the year. Mitch Creek today ruled out of the end of the season due to the hyper extension of the knee. Let's go. No, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. You're going to wait? Yeah, because we have an order. I want to make sure we, we don't lose time spending too much time okay, cool. on the top of this you know table what? right We've here. We've been doing this award-winning show for over <laughs> 18 months now, and finally you understand <laughs> what the rundown is about. So let's right. start with New Zealand, because mm. they have been great. Mm. Their second half of the year has been outstanding. Their first half was littered with some off-court controversies and players being in and out, and we made a great deal about it because that's what happens in pro sport. But they have been brilliant in the second half of the year. Scotty Hobson, you know, Sec Henry... Finn Delaney, again, great last Friday night. Thomas Abercrombie's had an outstanding year. And this New Zealand team, one they rated in the pre-season, probably a lot higher than most, have been outstanding. And probably right now, considering they are fourth, hold probably favouritism to make the playoffs from here. They are going to make the finals. Um, shout out to Scotty Hobson, the leader. Everybody has played a fantastic role. Abercrombie turned the clock back and has been in incredible form. You know, I said it every time when they played. You can always tell a person or a team when their back is against the wall. And they stood tall. Since Hobson's been back, 11 of 15 Ws. That's incredible. All right? Then you have uh, Sek Henry. He's been injured a little bit, but he's still been putting forth the effort. Finn Delaney has stepped up tremendously, and Rob Lowe as well. You got to credit that whole team and... I know he's the head coach, but what's his, what is his title? Director of Coaching. Listen, man, he's an incredible coach. Because it's not, we don't see that every day where international coaches get opportunities to come into the NBL. But for him to come into the NBL and that whole team and organization weather the storm, because mm -hmm. it was turbulent. Mm -hmm. And for them to be in the position that they are in right now, you got to credit that whole organization. They're getting a the fourth. Yep, I agree. And I agree with a lot of what you just said then. That was one of the gutsiest wins I've seen in a long, long time. On the road, Brisbane red hot, six games in a row. They've shortened the rotation, really just playing six guys. Jared Weeks still underdone with that shoulder injury, and they toughed it out. And you, or you credit all those guys you just spoke of. This team was 4-10 and ten after round 11, just before Christmas. They've won 10 of their past 13. And uh, in that game, their season was on the line. Lose and it's all over, and they got the job done. And I'm glad you just credited Dan Schmier because he deserves way more props than he's getting. Because, I mean, we've seen all the things he's had to put up with over the course of the season. I want to go back to the preseason with New Zealand. They had one of the most difficult and interrupted preseasons you could ever imagine in the NBL. Brand new coach, which means you're putting in a brand new system. Okay, that happens. Well, Weaver's done that in Sydney as well. Didn't have his team. 
They're all playing at the World Cup with the tall backs, isn't it? almost the whole team. Then when he does get the team, they pretty much, Obekpa doesn't work out, they've got to change the import. They go and play two games in season in the States, barely any practice time over there. Then when they eventually come back, they've got to come back, it's the third week of the season. They've got to start with four straight doubles. And they went two and six in that time because they were underdone. And yet he has been able to bring them together. And the way they executed down the stretch of that game was a beautiful thing. That's Man, and then the way Scotty Hobson signed off was a thing of beauty just to hear and see. He said, I I'm going to quote what he said. Hit me. You know, there's been a whole lot of talk about, you know, MVP. And I just wanted to show the NBL who's the best player in the league. 31 points? Mm-hmm. Seven rebounds, four assists. That is my favorite player. Just because of that sign-off. A lot of guys, he got the balls to actually say what he feels. He's not going to hide behind no camera and talk to only his teammates about how he feels. He's going to go on national TV and walk it and talk it. I got nothing but respect for anybody that can do that. That's what I got in terms of New Zealand. Oh, and I did something stupid on Twitter. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I did whoa. something stupid on Twitter, <laughs> I and I retweeted it. something that had nothing to do with me. And it was wrong. So I want to publicly apologize to you, Matt Walsh, on top of the congratulations for you bouncing back in the manner that you and your team did. My bad, and I want to apologize. And also, of course, we can always play this as well, because this is my favourite part of New Zealand if they do make the playoffs. <laughs> as we just have a look. Hit me, hit me. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bet's a bet. Yep. A bet's a bet, Liam Sin. I we, put we a look line to him in preseason. <laughs> Matt Walsh wasn't happy about it. Crawled into my DMs. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they, in fact, do make the finals, I need to sit <laughs> at <laughs> Spark Arena wearing <laughs> that t shirt. I slept on the breakers and. I had to sit down with my wife. I had to sit down and have a conversation yeah. with my wife during the week and just say, "Babe, no, it's not in the budget." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go talk to Flight Center and work something out because the breakers are looking good. <laughs> they are, and they're looking good because. I'm not going to call it the official wildcard game, but last Friday night gave us a perfect example of <laughs> what was. an NBL wildcard yeah, game would be. And it wasn't only wonderfully played, it was also wonderfully commentated. But it also means <laughs> that there's only one person probably left on Brisbane Island right about now. Of course, studs and duds, we're going to read a little more of that at nbl.com.au. We'll start with this because Brisbane have, as great as New Zealand have been, yep. Brisbane has been equally as good. And this is what happens, you get to a big moment and one team has to win, one team has to lose, and it was essentially the bounce of a ball. But this is what we loved commentating the game, boys. 10 nothing Brisbane, joint was going nuts, and your man Scotty Hobson said, I'll take control early, get the even keelness back in this game, and then we can have a wonderful game. And this is exactly how it played out. I mean, when you in pregame, Scotty Hobson talked about making sure we get a shot down, a shot up every possession, take care of the ball, doing the right things, and just relax and take care of business. And that's exactly what he did. Leading by example. Exactly. They went down 10 zip. But then after that timeout, they turned up and he set the tone for his teammates. And it was just a it was a great all-around performance. The big men, the way they were playing that zone, they were giving the bigs opportunity to hit. And the bigs were hitting. It was a three-point massacre for New Zealand. But I know I, right now on screen, mm. we have the it's... Brisbane Bullets going to Perth. So and we kind of, I wouldn't say it in the Brisbane Bullets, but we kind of thought about Friday night in New Zealand winning. That game in Perth was equally as massive. Sunday afternoon, the second of the double headers, and Perth were really good. And, and it's no, you know, that's no yeah. surprise to anyone. But Brisbane had opportunities to go there and write their weekend, and they couldn't do it. Yeah, they did. And you're not going to enjoy hearing this, Cam, but I mean, they were way up against it to, mm -hmm. to win that game in Perth, right? You play a couple of. Less than 48 hours early. Schedule loss, oh. baby. I'm telling you, you play less Schedule than 48 loss. hours early. You got to go to Perth. <laughs> They're fresh as a daisy. This They're waiting. They're one of the best teams in the league. I'm just waiting. saying they were all up against it. Because Perth are a better team, in particular at home. Plus the other no, factors. The way, how, the way how it all went down. Plus the other, other factors. factors. So had they played but Friday, it's... had they played Friday night Brisbane and Perth in Perth? Do you think Brisbane? I think that's the most friendliest schedule. 
play on the road in the first game to, and, instead of going... Anyway, we've been through that. I want to talk a little bit more about the Bullets. You're right, I don't like it. I want to talk about the last four minutes of that game against New Zealand, yes. right? Which defines their season. Which really defined their season. Because they were kind of opposite teams in terms of the way they executed down the stretch. And I feel like we saw a little bit of this with the Bullets late last season at times as well. Lamar Patterson is, of course, their closer, right? But at times, they, got a, they get a little stuck watching him and hoping he'll just make plays. And I felt like down the stretch, and Dan Shamir spoke about this in the post game. He said, it was like a playoff game, and it, towards the end of that game, it was all about, it was very simple, stand in the right spots and let's let the players make plays. And their spacing was a beautiful thing, and they, of course, played off Scotty Hobson, who had room to operate. Whereas the Bullets, they got stuck halfway between... We're riding Patterson and we got ball movement and player movement and we're in our flow. And they didn't really know what they were doing down the stretch there. Had a couple of good looks, so be at the rim. I think they'll go back to those minutes and they will resemble a bit what some late game situations resembled for them late last season as well. And they've got to kind of learn from that moving forward. A good thing for the Armoury is they'll win this weekend. They'll beat Cairns. Schedule loss for the Taipans. It's a, yeah, it's a tough form. Uh, allegedly. Tough form, yeah. You know, I, I believe all was actually what's going to happen is at that point, after they beat United, they're going to go and play a game where it doesn't really matter for them. So I would actually sit my stars down. Well, Cairns can still finish second, although by that stage they will probably know when's the Perth. That's going to beat Adelaide. I, I, I agree. Beat Adelaide. I, I agree. But also the, the, there is more to play for than just... That Perth game Adelaide against weekend. Adelaide is after the Brisbane after Cairns it, game. Yes. So they won't know. They'll, mm. they'll be, if they win against That's Melbourne, why I don't think they'll sit them. Yeah, if they win against Melbourne, they'll be going after it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about Melbourne because let's... that game on Friday night, you, you got something else? No. Let's... Oh, you got Wilson's goal. Oh, Wilson's goal. <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> you know what? I now hope that Brisbane make the playoffs oh, oh, and you've got to bring God. that bad boy back. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Melbourne, who weren't overly unbelievable last Saturday night against Illawarra. They did what they had to do. They built some percentage. But really, the destiny is in their hands. They've got the high percentage in other two teams, and if they yeah. win both, you'd think... They will make the finals, but it all starts on Thursday night when Cairns are in town. Enormous game. Mm -hmm. And look, Melbourne United on their home court against the Taipans. Look, it's the final, and if you can't get it done, all right, well then it's time for you to go home. Mm -hmm. But what an enormous game. Um, and, you know, obviously New Zealand and Brisbane will both be cheering on the Taipans. I also, also feel a bit sorry for South East Melbourne right now at the end of the season. But no Mitch Creek. And they're going to go against two teams that are going to be not only trying to beat them, but are going to try to pound, pound them into them, the yeah. ground. Um, but look, I like what the... Oh, it was a bit clunky at times in this mm. game, but the move of Mello Trimble onto the bench has worked. It has worked. The ball is moving much better. He had nine assists. They had 20 assists on 30 made field goals. This is a team last in the league in assist percentage over the, over the entire season. But over the last few games... Every, the ball is moving, everybody's getting involved. Chris Golding splashing threes, having 20 points, leading the team in scoring. That's what they need. That's what they need to be, and that's what they need to be on Thursday night. Here's what's going to happen. Chris Goulin needs to get off, right? Who's going to guard him? The defensive player of the year. That water's cut completely off. All right? The point guard position. Who's guarding Melo Trimble or money-making Mitch? The MVP of the league. They ain't doing nothing against that backcourt. That's where the points have to be generated. So they lose that battle. Now let's go to the front court. And this is my man, Sean Long. He's second because Cam Oliver is first team all NBL. He, ha he can't get off on him yet. He has not dominated Cam Oliver yet. I have no reason to believe Sean Long is winning that battle right there at the five. So they got the one position, the two position, and the five position. Three position and four position, it doesn't even matter. There is no way Melbourne United is going to beat that team. How many times Melbourne United played Kansas here? Three. Three. How many times they beat Kansas here? <laughs> None. None. So why, all of a sudden, they're going to beat this team? It ain't happening, my man. They out of here. I said that a couple weeks ago. Put your favorite seasoning in that pot. They cooked. Yeah. I mean... This is why I think New Zealand is going to get in, because there's no certainty to beat Cairns. In mm. fact, they've got a big, steep mountain to climb to get that done. Is it 
like foregone conclusion, like you're saying? No, of course not. It's They're a actually... foregone conclusion. <laughs> it's a foregone conclusion. This is the thing about sport. We sit here and say mm -hmm. foregone conclusions. We say New Zealand's not making it. Put them in the mm -hmm. oven. It's to they're, they're cooked. And then all of a sudden, things turn around. You say, Perth can't win it, they need a third import, and then they go ahead and win the championship. It's not a foregone conclusion. It ain't a foregone conclusion, but I know the vibes just <laughs> like you and you. <laughs> but I tell you, they do match up really well, just they like do. you laid out. And uh, it's going to be a... This time of the thing. year, it is about matchups. If you cannot outplay your matchups, we all know the plays. We all know where we want to go. Mm -hmm. We all know what kind of defensive adjustments we're going to do. Can you score on the man one-on-one? -on -one? Mm -hmm. No. Defensive player of the year, MVP, best point guard in the league. Mirko Jarek, if, if, if the defensive Whoa. player of the year needs some time, Serbian then he, the Serbian sniper stepping in and lock up <laughs> on D. Come on, man. These young fellas is young and starving. I'm not letting a team I beat three times this year beat me all of a sudden. Nah. They got to they gotta lay down. This is playoffs right now for Cairns. They are setting the tone early. Melbourne is out of here. Two teams we haven't really spoken about because we know they're already playing finals, like Cairns and Sydney and Perth. They both play home games this weekend and we expect Sydney to finish on top and Perth to finish second. So we're going to spend a lot of the next couple of weeks talking about these two teams. Yes. But their weekend's a little less critical than the rest of the teams. But as it stands right now, Sydney worked hard, got the win in overtime. And South East Melbourne Phoenix were pretty good on Sunday, must be said. And, and Perth were outstanding on Sunday. They were good. They battled hard South East Melbourne and uh, they had a great atmosphere in that mm. building. It was, it was buzzing and they nearly got a done. Kyle Adnan was massive in the fourth quarter, has his three highest scoring games of the season against that Sydney Kings defence. But games. shout out to the Sydney Kings, mm -hmm. because we have hardly talked about them all year. Why? Because they've just been consistently great. That shot was ridiculous yeah. off the yeah, backboard yeah, from yeah. the court. But they, they beat up on their little cousins this week, the Illawarra Hawks, and they're going to do what no team's ever done before, top of the table the whole year. I want to talk more about them. You hit the Wildcats first, and then we'll get back to the Kings. I mean, this is my team to win the championship, you know? And to... Um, I just know that defensively, the Sydney Kings have no reason to change their defense. They've won all year with the defense, and I believe that they are that stubborn... Mm -mm. And feeling that this is going to work. What do you think they're going to do when, they, when the hot pick come? that nonsense that Bogan just goes like this to the four men and he goes and that's going to work? They ain't Don't beating use, Perth Wildcats. They'll use so some far. of that. They'll use who, some of that. Against who? Uh, well, against, against who? Almost everyone. They're... Almost everyone. Who's the biggest threat? Did it work against them? Per, per, I'll tell you this. Thank you very much. Hang on a second. Two and one against Perth, right? Or oh. three and what is the record? Three and one. How it work against Perth? That, that nonsense. That you go there, I'll stay here. Please. What nonsense. That defense. That with Bogus sitting here. And Bogus, when that five, that when that five that. said it, that he worked said well. the format. You go to Word? What's it the record? That worked well. What's the record? In those situations. What's the record? They need to make more adjustments. What's the record? We've been through the record. Okay. Well, I know. I don't know. Some people just watching overtime <laughs> for the first time. What is the record between that team and Perth? 3-1. There we go. How much Bryce Cotton average? 35, if you don't know, I know. Thank you. And I don't even talk numbers. They, can't, they ain't got nobody to stop him. They have nobody to stop him. That's why he's averaging 35. Yeah. True or false? I, I hear you. But I, we heard... I hear you. It's 3 and I gotta one. Remind I'm not you making though. this up. I got to remind you. We heard this last year. Okay. And what did this, he do last year? You, no, you said the same things about the Wildcats. Okay. They can't do it for this reason, that reason, this reason. You're saying, Liam, listen to me while listen I tell you. Listen to me while I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they won the championship, right. I couldn't find you in the building. Yo, I you his phone my died. phone died. His phone died. My phone did die. His phone I, died. Died. I just want to say his this. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> Sometimes we overanalyze. I'm guilty of it more than anybody else. Sometimes we break this stuff down so much, we can't see the forest for the trees. When you step back and you look mm -hmm. at this thing and you go, well, this Sydney Kings team at the start of the year, we thought they were the best team. We thought they'd win the title. Right. For this reason, that reason, they've got this guy, they've got that guy, and this coach is going to come in. He looks like he's going to do a good job, which he has Yes, done. he has. And nothing has really happened to change that. They've been on Something top. Something happened to me. They've been, me. On, they've been on top the whole year. Right. They've been able to... Not only that, they've been so far comfortable up there 
that they've been able to manage their bodies. Got you. Bogut's not been played into the ground like he was last year. They've been able to... They didn't have to rush Kevin Lish back because it was a must-win game at any point in time. They've got... They added Xavier Cooks, who has been elite. Mm -hmm. This is a team primed for the finals. Now, Will Weaver didn't come down the last shower. He's new to this league. He's not new to the game. Right. You think he's going to throw all his cards out on the table? It's of not a lay down not. Of course he's Watch not. Watch everything we're going to do and then you can prepare accordingly. Of course he's not. He's going to keep some things up his sleeve. As, as all coaches are. He showed some things in their last, in their previous matchup in Sydney. Kept some other things aside. Then we're going to see some adjustments from the Kings with Bryce Cotton in the playoffs when they meet. Not if they meet, mm -hmm. when they meet, mm -hmm. that we haven't seen to this point. What's going to happen with Tariq White? Is the fight at the end? Of the, here's my thing: Is Bogut stepping out to guard the perimeter? That's all I want to know. He, right. could, he could do everything he want to do. If his ass ain't stepping out, they lose him because of him. Cut. Period. Cut you can do that. everything else you want to do if he is not stepping out of that paint to to at least get to the free throw line. They lose it because of him. You could dress it up, all, uh, disguise the defense to save him. He better step out or they lose it. Just the guy at the back, you just cut and copy. They will do that in your grand final week, please. All right, let's talk <laughs> a little bit about Joey Wright. Because, <laughs> look, obviously, the rumours went around about this time last week that Joey Wright might be about to end his tenure. Still with two years to go in his contract at Adelaide. He was asked pre-game by John Casey on the weekend. He said, I'm here until the club doesn't want me. Grant Kelly, the owner, said, oh, you know, we reassess at the end of the year. He has been a wonderful coach for a long, long time. As you have a look at some of the numbers where he sits. He's wonderful coach. He's been legendary. Legendary. They go Brian Gorgian, Lindsay Gaze, and there's Joey Wright. He's a championship winner. Mm. He's done so much. He's developed, as we've spoken about so much over the course of NBL overtime, the young talent he has developed, and the Mitch Creeks and the Terrence Ferguson of the world just to start. And now we still don't really know if this weekend will be his last, but he's probably pointing towards the end as an Adelaide coach. Well, look, as you said, we don't know what it is, but, you know, due to speculations and what, you know, it's been thrown out there or talked about behind the scenes, here's my thing with this whole situation. So what? Marriage, some marriages don't work. The man got two years left in his deal. If it ain't working, okay. Is this the first time we've seen something like this? If it's not working, pay the man out. He, and you part ways. That's it. This is sport. What is the big deal with this thing? Well, Can somebody got, tell me what's the big deal? Well, it's not a major deal. The fact is he's got two years to go on his deal, and the fact is he's done a really good job, and coaches get sacked. Now, he's not, we're not making this any more of a deal than we would of any other coach who might have been or might be in a similar situation. We don't see a great deal of NBL coaches get sacked, I guess, with two years remaining, but okay. it, it's still a, it, it's a deal. It's not the biggest thing that's ever hit the NBL. Yeah, like, let, mean, me, let me tell you why it's a massive out, deal. Whatever. Let me tell you why it's a massive deal. Yeah, let me hear. Because of Joey Wright's standing in this league. This Friday night, uh, this, what is it, Saturday night? Right. Yes, Saturday night. He's going to coach his 500th mm. NBL game. Right. That's an exclusive club of only three, three of the greats. Right. Gorge and Gaze, and now Wright. The coincidence and the symmetry of that game being his 500th, most likely going to be his last game for the 36ers, is amazing. And um, it's... And also, just in professional sport these days, these kind of situations mm. are of extreme interest. Right. But... This is a guy who has coached in this league for nearly 20 years, is a championship winner, is a guy whose teams have, not the last couple of seasons, but prior to that, made the finals year after year after year. Highly respected around this, this league. And this game needs to be a celebration. We don't know for sure. See, this, this... We don't know. Listen, I'm saying, we don't know for sure if Joe Wright's going to coach again in this league. We don't. And if it's not, if this is his last game, man, we need to tip our hat and celebrate what he has brought to our league over the journey. I agree, but the thing is we don't know if this is his last game. So it's a very hard thing to celebrate something that we don't know you for certain. Celebrate I mean, 500, 500 games. Well, we're celebrating yeah, football. Yeah, it's in 500 a games. Point. In a massive way. Right. He'll coach again. If he wants, he'll coach again in the league. If he wants. If he wants. He spoke in a press conference a little recently after uh, the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant mm -hmm. saying, as a father of daughters... This has hit home that I haven't been spending. I've been spending a lot of time with these 12 men, and maybe I should spend some more time with these girls. 
Joey Wright's not going to be in the LD Mobile Top 10 Players of the Week. I wouldn't imagine, unless he did something I wasn't aware of. But let's see how we go when we throw to him. Top 10 Players of the Week. Round 19 is done. Let's have some fun at your LD Mobile NBL Top 10. At number 10, it's no big deal if you miss your shot when Will Magnay's on rebound watch. Big Willie doing more work at the window than a drive through at Hungry Jacks as he hammers home the rebound putback. That gets him in at number 10. On to number nine, and with the shot clock winding down, it's up to Sunday Detch to stretch his range. And man, this shot is flat insane. From way outside, he lets this one fly. And number 44 delivers the long distance score. That gets Sunday in at number nine. Moving along to number eight, and talk about setting the tone for the first points of the game. Tariko White throws this one home. The backdoor cut set him free from the D, and White takes flight at number eight. At number seven, stick with us as we watch this one unspool for Joe Luol Achul. First, he swats the shot on one end. Then he starts chugging the other way and finishing with the dunk gets him the number seven play. I pity the fool going against Joe Luol Achul. The big man for Melbourne gets in at number seven. On to number six in New Zealand. Better make those cross-court passes tighter cause Sobey won Kenobi swooping in like an X-Wing fighter. Nathan Sobey using the force to divorce himself from gravity as he gets the steal and the stuff at number six. At number five, oh, Lamar's gonna make a star of Matt Hodgson as he draws all the D from the breaker, setting up Hodgson for the rim shaker. Brisbane gets in at number five. On to number four, and has Eric Griffin not heard the word? Space Camp's hops are flat absurd. You cannot go up soft against Oliver's liftoff. Nothing but pumpkin from the great Space Cam at number four. At number three, Scotty Hobson starts his run from near half court before rising high like a church steeple then hammering it down over all the people. The extension from another dimension gets Hobson in at number three. On to number two and like a runaway freight train, it's Eric Griffin bringing the pain. Space Cam got him earlier in the countdown, but Griffin getting payback with this throwdown at number two. And what could possibly beat that? You know what's coming. At number one, you say you want a revolution? Well, Space Cam's got the solution. The man is standing flat-footed, but he still gets up for the nifty 360 as Oliver's twist tops the list. Landing at number one on the NBL. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Well, thanks to LD Mobile. And if you watch that game, it might have been when you threw the headphones off. The headset, you, you were about as pumped. They come off semi-regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. All right. Last round. What are we most looking forward to? And there's so many things to pick out. What are we looking forward to? Cairns, Melbourne United. Mm. That's the game of the round. Mm. Yeah. That's an enormous game. Um, and then they just get bigger from there, if, mm. depending on how the results play out, especially if Melbourne beat Cairns. Um, Heck, if Cairns win, all of a sudden the Brisbane Bullets start thinking, holy smokes, let's see what we can do here. Uh, I'm wondering, I mean, sport's an incredible thing. Best reality TV is sport. Things happen that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. The Illawarra Hawks beat the Sydney Kings this season. No one saw that coming. If South East Melbourne pull off one of these wins, they decide the finals. Now, it's... No Mitch Creek, we don't expect it to happen. It's not if they happen. do, if they do, they can. It would be an epic way for them in their inaugural season to finish off, to decide the finals one way or another. Yeah, there's something. No Mitch Creek, all right. Mm. If John Robinson hits 19 threes in two <laughs> games, listen to this. No, listen to this. He equals the NBL Shane Hill's NBL record, which Shane Hill holds in a 48-minute 48 48 game. game. 19 over the next over two. two games. No, we'll no. Well, you know what? See, incredible, baby. Yeah. But you're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, that is still like... We, we, we've spoken a lot. Oh, he's got Wilson <laughs> on again. The floor manager for <laughs> Wilson back. Wilson's gone. They, I, I know, yet again, improbable, but if, if South East Melbourne Phoenix are to win either of these games, you think John Robinson's going to have to have a big one, but huge. it is huge. Thursday night, nothing sure. If you're in Melbourne, even if you're not, get a ticket, get to the game. It's almost sold out because it sets up not just the weekend,
but the NBA is going to be finals. Can't Ooh. wait for it. And we've got the Gazes this weekend as well. I'm excited. Hey, you two are excited. You're out working. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I'm always working. So you, you got Melbourne getting in? Huh? I got Melbourne getting in. I okay. think they'll win both. I got New Zealand. Who you got? New Zealand as well? Flat's a book. No, nah, New Zealand's in it. So are you taking your wife or not? Or you just can't by yourself? <laughs> no, nah, we're, we're going to make it work. Because <laughs> your wife texted Matt me Walsh, today. I'll call your you. wife texted me today and said, I didn't realise the finals go for three weeks. I said, oh, nah, he's going skydiving and he's got a couple of things he's got to do over there. All right. <laughs> hashtag C incredible. Hashtag NBL overtime. Double overtime at NBL sometime over the next couple of days. See ya. Peace.